Fats are good. Fats are bad. Carbs are good. Carbs are bad. Is it the added sugar? Is it the saturated fats? Well, a new study was out suggesting that a keto diet may actually be less healthy than we think and could actually be promoting cardiac disease. But I have a little extra to say about that. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. Hope you're having a good day out there. And uh, thank you for continuing to support us and to continuing sharing information and subscribing and all the good stuff so we can get the word out there. So let's talk about the keto diet and some new information that just come out. Now, first of all, let's talk about a ketogenic diet. There's lots of terms for this, people in the Atkins diet, but let's talk about what it actually is, first of all. Okay, so ketosis or ketones, ketogenic diets, work under the premise that if there's not enough carbs that are present in the body in order to sustain the energy production, the calories that are needed, then fat is then used instead to be burned off and to create the calories. Okay, and as a result of that, for loss of body fat because of the fact that it's being burned out. But it would only that only happens as a secondary phenomenon if there's not enough carbs to be burned, or in the case of somebody who has diabetes, who can't use the carbs because it's not getting into the cells for a person who has like, diabetes, and the insulin is not working properly or not enough. Okay, so now what it's also doing, though, is it does cut out a lot of healthy carbs, things like fruits, certain vegetables, legumes, beans, um, and some whole grains, like, you know, we know brown rice is a healthy thing. So it's cutting out all of those in the first place in order to lower the, the, the calories from carbs in the first place. It does limit carbohydrates to under about 25, maybe up to 50 milligrams per day, uh, grams per day, excuse me, um, and the feeling with this is that the lower the intake of the carbs, the better, because again, the faster that a person will go into ketosis. Okay. Now, when we talk about someone doing a fasting, okay, that is producing ketones. In fact, breakfast or break fast is what breaks the fast in the morning. And some, and there are people who may put a little ketones into their urine just simply from not eating overnight. And of course, if a person's intermittent fasting, similar type of thing as well during those hours as they go into the morning time. Okay. Now, First of all, as far as this, this, my personal story, um, to ketosis, to a ketogenic diet goes back to my second year of residency at University of South Florida, Tampa General. So this was about 1995, 96. And there was, I was working in the developmental clinic, and this was actually the very, very first time that I heard about a diet helping somebody's health out that wasn't like a cardiovascular type of thing. And there was a child who had infantile spasms, a, a toddler. Now, infantile spasms is a type of very, very severe epilepsy, seizure disorders, where really no other medications will work. And, but it was discovered, and this goes back over a hundred years, where it was discovered, and I don't know how they actually figured this out, that when a when people with this particular type of seizure disorder would be in ketosis, it would make the seizures go away. So Johns Hopkins University, I believe, is the first university that formally developed a program on how to do this safely because you can mess somebody up, especially a young, fragile child. But now almost every major medical university, um, me medical center, major hospital, anyone um, who has metabolic clinics, they have this um, as something that they do. And so this kid had come out and this mom was telling me, yeah, we pretty much we eat eggs. We eat um, we eat different types of creams and cheeses and um, and, uh, you know, we're allowed to have whipped cream and stuff like that and, and heavy creams and such as long as the sugar is down to a certain amount. Um, and here was this kid who I mean, the mom showed me pictures and videos of the kid having seizures and how bad it was. And here was this kid playing in front of me and you would never know and she said i'm like tell me the story i'm like how this happened and you know they had to go up to johns hopkins um, from tampa in order to get this done and clearly it was working and that was absolutely one of the big light bulb moments of my career of like wow nutrition can really make a difference that was before i learned about casein and gluten-free diets and autism and all the other things that i know about now but that was the sentinel moment for me so that's kind of cool now, um, now when I started hearing about like the Atkins diet, which was kind of like the first commercial based diet, they would prepare food specifically to help keep people in ketosis. But I just always had a little bit of a, does this make sense to me? And why was that? Because as I had mentioned before, when a person has diabetes that they're, and they can go into a trouble with their diabetes because their sugars were not controlled and the body stops using the insulin. 
then they would be put, they would go into ketosis. And if it went far enough, it would go into a, a, a diabetic ketoacidosis that could put somebody into a coma. And it just, when I first learned about this, I had the skepticism of like, should we really be creating for a person for dietary purposes? Again, not seizure purposes, but for dietary weight loss purposes. Does it make sense for a person to be put into ketosis, mimicking what happens with a diabetic? Okay, so I always had some questions about what, doing it, and you know, it was never something that was really a frontline therapy for me as I became a physician um, doing nutritional interventions. Now, that being said, does it work for weight loss? It does, but there are definitely a few caveats. Usually the weight loss doesn't get seen for about two to three weeks into being into ketosis. Okay. Secondly, it is a hard thing for people to sustain. I know a lot of people who did Q1 on ketogenic, um, keto, um, ketone, um, keto types of diets, but very few people do I know were able to sustain it, okay? And that to me, you know, you want to find something if you're making a lifestyle choice and it is helping you, you need it to be something that's sustainable, something that a person can do long term. You know, losing 10 pounds just to gain it right back when you stop. You know, um, I guess I've seen people do that for weddings and stuff like that. But in, as a rule, that's not necessarily what a person's aiming for when they're trying to help their lifestyle out. Okay, now let's talk about this new study that was just published, okay? Now, this was an association. This is absolutely not proof of cause, okay? And certainly we've seen other studies that have said ketos, um, being in ketosis, ketogenic diets can help on cardiovascular. There's doctors who claim that it completely stops it. So I'm presenting to you the newest research. I'll make presenting to you what it shows, but also some things that I, in, in looking at this, made me wonder, is this the perfect study? Although if you look at any study, there's no such thing as a perfect study. Okay. Now, so what they did, and this was, let me get this right. So this was from the Healthy Heart Program Prevention Clinic at St. Paul's Hospital and University of British Columbia Center for Heart Lung Innovations in Vancouver. In Vancouver. And what they did is they took 300 plus 305 people who were on a low carb, high fat diet. And they compared it to 1,200 people who were on a more standard diet. Now, you've heard me talk about the standard American diet or the SAD diet. Um, this was actually taking place in England. So this was a more standard British diet where they do lots of things like meats and potatoes too. So, um, of course, not necessarily the healthiest diet, although probably not as healthy as unhealthy as a standard American diet. But that's something um, for that. Now, these people were followed for 10 years, for over a decade. So that is a long time to be following people, and that helps you get more robust data. Um, now, it, and this was actually taken from a United Kingdom um, data bank. So um, not just from, you know, but it was really um, something that was, you know, taken from that particular population, which we'll come back to in a little bit. Now, what did they find? They found that people who were on a low carb, high fat diet, that it made, that this diet in particular seemed to be linked to increases of the bad cholesterol. Now, we've heard some information that the good cholesterol, HDL, may not be that good and protective after all, but it's pretty clear that high levels of the bad LDL cholesterol has a strong link to cardiovascular disease. Okay. Now, when, when, when following this diet with, by their standards, if there was more than 45% fat in the diet and less than 25%. That's what labeled them as high fat, low carb in, in, in the first place. Okay. Oh, my fingers are stuck in here today. All right. Now, what did they show? Okay. So the people who were following the diet, they did have higher levels of the LDL. Now they also had lower, um, had high levels of apoprotein B. Now this in of itself, it's a protein that coats the LDL bad cholesterol and it itself can predict Cardiovascular disease, heart attack, strokes, blood, um, you know, blocking of the, of the, of the coronary arteries. And perhaps even better than just looking at the LDL alone. So it's the coding around it that seems to be the real signal for problems. So when a person does a cholesterol panel, if they do a standard cholesterol panel, they'll see LDL, total cholesterol, triglycerides, and HDL. But if you do a more advanced lipid profile, which is every laboratory does it, that's where you'll get things like lipoprotein A and this apolipoprotein B. So it's a lot more information that actually be more detailed to tell you how at risk is a person. Okay. Now, as I said, this association was made that the higher the amount of fat intake, that the higher the risk for the major cardiac um, events. Um, but again, they said it's not, it can't prove of cause for something like this. Now, but they did say that on average, people tended to increase their LDLs with the more fat intake that they had. Okay. Now, 
Here is the reason why I would question if this is accurate for everybody, though, because it's the quality, the type of fat that's being done. And what they had found in this particular one is that the people who followed the high fat diet, it was particularly high in saturated fat. OK, now there are saturated fat, there's unsaturated fat. OK, saturated fat is the, is the form that it is more of the clogger and it's found more in most animal products as well as coconut oil. OK, um, that's why when there was also part of the ketone, um, the ketogenic diet um, fad, if you will, or the following the diet, drinking and high intake of coconut oil was part of that as part of the recommendation. So, again, more saturated fat. Um, now, what they also did in this, which I think was really good, is that they stratified this. They controlled it for other things such as um, for other risk factors of heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, and smoking. So they were equal amounts in both of the groups. So it wasn't because one group had a healthier lifestyle than the other because they didn't. It was just everything equal. Those who are in the high-fat, low-carb diet, this is what it brought. Now, um, in interesting, and then what they showed it was more than double the risk of having the cardiac disease. So that wasn't like a 10% increase. It was a 100% increase. That's a lot. Okay. Now, there were a few limitations to the study. Okay. First of all, um, it wasn't like it was tens of thousands of people. Hundreds to thousand people is a lot. But certainly, there's more likelihood for error based upon chance, the smaller the number that the patients are. But still, it's, it wasn't like 10 people in each group. That, it's 300 at least. Um, second, so that was part of the small sample size. But also, it was only people really of British descent. So may this not be accurate for people of African descent, of Latino descent, of other part of Western Europe, Asian descent? We don't know because it was just that. So obviously, this behooves checking other people's diets. But there are other diets where, again, there may not be as much saturated fat in their diet as what these people had. OK, and so, again, if you didn't differentiate the types of fats, it may not be towards all of this. It may just be towards saturated fat, but we don't know because he didn't say it. OK, now, in terms of my concluding thoughts, OK, um, first of all, if eating the unsaturated fats, avocados, olive oil, nuts and seeds, to me, that's and that's kind of universally felt to be the more um, healthier forms of oils. We know that some people who take um, more omega six fatty acids, some, sometimes they can increase inflammation. But omega nine fatty acids, that's the form that is the least likely. That's the olive oil for you, uh, but also found in other types of things um, as well. But that's um, really quite overall. Everybody says olive oil is the best type of oil, but you know, higher olive oil in one's diet probably not a problem. I don't think anybody's going to be drinking olive oil in order to get their calories. But again, in terms of that, that's something that's really important. Now, also, um, of course, eating lots of those fatty foods will produce the LDL. Um, and again, that itself can build up in the arteries. And that can be a problem, right? We don't want blockage of our arteries, right? Not only do we not want our blood sugars to be out of control and our cholesterol, but if you block the arteries, that's kind of the end game. And that's where someone can have a sudden coronary event. Now, what is my overall take on this? Number one, fats are fine, but minimize your intake of saturated fats and, and increase your amounts of omega-3 fatty acids, omega-6 fatty acids, unsaturated fats. Number two, carbs in moderation, probably fine, especially those that are found whole in food. Those that are complex carbs, um, but really avoiding added sugars. We've done videos about this before, about how added sugar really seems to be the carb that is the problem relative to these types of cardiovascular diseases. Now, also, protein is good. Okay. Now, of course, people who eat a plant-based proteins, probably the healthiest, because also plant-based proteins are going to have more saturated fats. OK, so I would say that even if you are a carnivore, try to incorporate proteins, legumes, um, um, nuts and seeds, like I mentioned before, um, tr beans. Try to incorporate as much of that into your diet as possible to get that more lean protein in there as well. So hope I taught you something new today. Um, again, this is just one piece of information, as I've talked about before. Whenever a, a compelling study comes out, we should recognize it's just that. It's a study. We should file it. We should look for um, for evidence that either supports it or, um, or argues against it in order to make better conclusions. But at least now you have some information why it makes sense to me how a high saturated keto diet, that can be a problem. Have a great day. Thank you.